What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Captain America Civil War review. This is going to be the non-spoiler version. So I did get a chance to go see this movie and um, I'm glad I got to do that because it was a really good movie. So um, let's just get straight into the details of what I want to talk about in the non-spoiler one. Of course, um, I did do one of these for Batman vs. Superman. So I decided, you know what, I'll do these for the movies that I like that I want to go see that I watch. It's not going to be like a major thing on my channel, but like I said... When it's a movie I want to see and I'm anticipating that it's going to be good, I'll do a review for it to let you guys know. So, of course, I got to see a screening of the movie. So, let's just get into what I want to talk about here. Okay, um, there will be a spoiler version for those of you who want to know, like, the details of the movie or who saw the movie. Some people like spoilers or don't mind spoilers. I try to avoid spoilers, but I'm the kind of person that I can still watch something and enjoy even though I know what's going to happen. That's just me. I like, like, certain things. And I'm going to talk about it now. Okay, um, first of all, the movie is very long. It's almost three hours long. It's like two and a half hours long. So that's just the first thing I want to tell you guys now. And um, for the duration of the movie, there is a lot of action. So let's get that clear right off the gate. Um, some people will want to know if this movie is as good as Batman v Superman or better. Because some people didn't like Batman v Superman. Now, I'm going to say straight off the bat that I think this movie is slightly better now, a lot of people are going to say it's a lot better. It's, the, it's what Batman v Superman should have been. I'm going to make comparisons to that because this is just me talking about the movie. I'm not no movie reviewer or nothing like that. Um, Batman v Superman was still a good movie to me personally. I think both movies are good. Um, the fighting in this in this movie, part of me, is way better than any of the um, DC movies. And unfortunately, that's kind of where it's just going to be no question that it's better than Batman v Superman. Batman v Superman's fighting scenes were a little eh versus Captain America where I'm not going to get into spoilers, but all I'm going to say is Ant-Man surprised me so much in this movie. Like, I actually didn't think he would have the role he had in this movie and that fight scene in the airport. So I'm going to say you're going to hear a lot of people talking about the airport scene because that scene is nuts. It's It's really good, man. Like... Batman v Superman had the Batman v Superman fight. This actually is just like on a whole nother level. <laughs> like that scene is amazing. I'm not going to spoil it because this is a non-spoiler review. So let's just get into the story real fast um, without spoiling it. Okay, basically the story is pretty much a situation occurs in the movie. And because of that situation, they end up having like a disagreement. Now the government decides that just like in Batman v Superman... That, you know, something needs to be done about people just having all these powers and just running around, just doing pretty much whatever they want. So some of the heroes agree and some of the heroes disagree. Pretty much the reasoning behind it, you have to watch the movie to find out. But something happens in the movie, like different chains of events happen for Tony Stark's Iron Man to make him feel like, you know what? You're right. We should really, you know, be accountable for some of the stuff that happens. And I'm not going to spoil it, but when you watch the movie, you'll see why he feels that way. And I am in, it's, it's the same thing for Captain America. Something happens in the movie that makes him feel accountable for, you know, what he's doing in the sense of, you know what? This wouldn't be this way if we were doing this this way. So what ends up happening is I am in, ends up feeling strongly about being registered for having powers and Captain America completely feels the opposite strongly because of what happens in this movie. Now, the good thing about the writing in the movie is that they go through all the Marvel movies and tie everything up together into this movie to make everything make sense for like all the different phases of the Marvel movies. And that's one thing I do got to give Marvel. The continuation of the movie process was always something that I, I said, man, how long can they keep doing this? Even when they have a movie that people don't like, they still manage to come and bring that back and tie it into another movie and clean up the mistakes or the loopholes or whatever they had and make everything make sense. And this movie actually did that. There's a lot of things that you saw in the other Avengers movies, the other Iron Man movies and Captain America movies. And when you see this movie, you're like, oh, okay, it's kind of dope how they put all of that in this movie and just made it into one situation where now everybody's against one another. So that's pretty dope. The writing on the movie is really good. You have to pay attention to some parts, but for the most part, it's just some Marvel movie. It's not it's not rocket science. You could you're gonna get it. They're gonna walk you through all of it. There's times when I wanted more fighting than us talking, but the fighting already makes up for it. So let's get into the effects and visuals. Um. The Avengers movies have been known for doing like these these action sequences when they fight. And they kind of went ham with it in Age of Ultron. 
to the point where people were kind of making fun of the movie a little bit because certain parts of it was just a little too CGI-ish, I guess, i.e. why the Hulk wasn't in there. Now, there is some CGI in this movie where you're going to look and go, yeah, that's definitely some CGI. I'm not going to spoil what it is, but like I said, when you get to the airport, you'll definitely know the scene I'm talking about. But anyway, with that being said, um, but it's not as bad as Age of Ultron was as far as, okay, they did a lot of fighting and a lot of camera effects, which is what I like to see in a movie. I like to see effects. I like to see how far can they push it. They push it without going as bad as far as they did with Age of Ultron, but doing some unique stuff in this one as well. Now, the only thing that I will have to say about the movie is there's certain characters that weren't in it, and I can't, I can't understand why they weren't in the movie. Now, if you want to know what I'm talking about, you'll have to watch the spoiler version of the review, but there were, there were two major um, Avenger characters that are not in the movie, and I just I don't understand how they did that or why they did it, but they made up for it, I guess, with Ant-Man and Spider-Man. So with that being said, let's move on to the rest of what I'm going to say about the review. So the writing is pretty tight. The action is pretty good. The reasoning for why this is happening, I'm going to be honest, this is where I got to get into the criticism. Um, they feel like they definitely just kind of did this because of Batman v Superman. The reasoning for why they're fighting is a little, how can I say, it's a little bit of, um, it's like they just did it just to have this situation occur. Now, there's characters that are introduced in this movie, so I'm not going to have to say I spoil a warning or whatever. You know that Black Panther is introduced in this movie. The Black pa Panther character is actually pretty damn dope. I like him a lot as a character. I like what they did with him in this movie. Um, I wasn't too fond of Falcon, but Falcon pretty much became a very good character in this movie. Scarlett Johansson's uh, regular character, Black Widow, actually did good in this movie, as she always does. She's pretty good in um, the Avengers movies. And um, Scarlet Witch, which is kind of a um, character that wasn't really doing too much and saying too much. She had like a weird accent in the last movie. In this one, she's more talkative. She seems more Americanized. You know, she's not from America, but in this one, she's like very much more built on as a character. They developed a lot more. You see a little bit of the uh, comic book situation with her and the vision where, I don't know. It's kind of weird to see it in a movie, but they're kind of like toying with the romantic thing with them too so it's a little weird to see that in a movie but um it's there a little bit i won't get into like i said the spoilers of it but you you gotta pay attention and you could catch on to the fact that they may be going in that direction or they may not you'll have to decide for yourself on that now we um as far as uh bucky the winter soldier you find out a lot of things about him in this movie as well and that's kind of weird now that's one thing i do got to critique about the movie the reason that captain america wants to say Bucky is because that was his best friend. But the stuff that goes on in the movie is so ridiculous. It kind of makes you look at Captain America like he's a nut. You know, it's like, dude, uh, this man might need to be executed or something like that. Just saying. I mean, you know, just looking at all the stuff he did in the last two movies and you're still going out there and trying to save him this time the third. Anyway, you'll have to see it to understand why I'm saying that. They, some of it is like, it's a little bit forced. It's like Captain America is like a kind of a douche. It's like, he just want to fight. <laughs> so if you don't agree with him, you know, you got to knuckle up. Even if you're right and he's right. Like if he thinks he's right, whether he's right or wrong, in some instances he's right, some instances he's wrong, you got to fight with him. So it's kind of weird. Now I understand why he couldn't pick up Thor's hammer. Because if you always want to fight, you wouldn't be able to pick up Thor's hammer because your only way to justify yourself is through fighting. So it's like he has no other way of handling nothing. He's not diplomatic. It's no talking. It's shut up and fight. That's just his whole persona throughout the whole movie. So he's like completely the G.I. Joe gung-ho character. And, um, you know, it, it, keeps, it keeps the action going in the movie and it keeps the movie going. But there's points in the movie where it's like they are just kind of like forcing situations. Now, without spoiling it, I'm just going to say there's one other scene you got to look out for. There's a chase in the movie. I'm not going to say who, I'm not going to say what. But when you see the chase, that was... that Man, that one scene put its foot up Batman v Superman's ass, like, completely. I'm just going to keep it 100. That one scene kind of might might have did it. And then you got the airport scene. Between those two scenes, man. So, anyway, okay. Let's talk about Spider-Man real fast. Spider-Man is... This is the best Spider-Man ever. Definitely, hands down. The Spider-Man was the best Spider-Man that i ever seen in a movie. So, they definitely needed to do this. He's a younger Spider-Man. He's funny. The way they introduce him in the movie is a little, it's a little bullshit. I'm going to keep it real. They kind of like just dropped him in a movie. Um, 
he had his powers for a little while. I won't say how long. Like I said, I'm going to get into all that in the spoiler version. But the bottom line is he's already Spider-Man when they bring him into the movie. And um, the way they find out about him and all that, like I said, when you see it, you're going to be like, okay, they just wanted to put him in the movie. But they make up for it because he is dope in the movie. He actually, uh, he does his thing in the movie, man. Pretty good. But then when they get rid of him in the movie too, it's kind of like... Man, they just did that just to fucking take our money. And, you know, take our money. They definitely deserve it. But you, there's a, the Spider-Man in the movie is definitely a take my money moment. You just know they put him in it for fan satisfaction and it's worth it. So with that being said, um, yeah, the movie's pretty much a lot of fighting and uh, it's what we want, man. It's, it's a lot of mindless fighting for a reason. But the reason is a little forced. So I got to say the writing is good, but the plot is a little, it's a little forced. They, they, they did that to completely rival batman v superman you could just tell they just wanted to have the storyline out there and they wanted this to happen um i will spoil this right now with one thing and say nobody died because there were rumors that they think uh somebody would die nobody died as far as i could tell and so uh with that being said um that's it man hopefully i didn't really spoil it by telling you that but yeah nobody died so i'm, I'm gonna just put that out there because they keep making it seem like certain people died and uh nobody died so that's not really a spoiler, but it is a spoiler in a way because you may be thinking somebody's going to die. So, sorry, I had to fuck that one up for you. But anyway, um, yeah, so let's go over it again. The story's pretty tight. The, the, the uh, fighting is dope. The visuals are dope. The character development is pretty good. Spider-Man is like, man, they blew their load with that. The Spider-Man is just really good, man. I can't wait to see them make a Spider-Man movie with this Spider-Man. It, it was really good. It really, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, his aunt and everything and Tony Starks, they have like this conversation. It's hilarious. Anyway, I want to spoil this. So I'm going to stop here because I want to get into like a lot of details about the movie, but I won't do it in this one. But the bottom line is definitely, definitely go see this movie. Is it better than Batman v Superman? Yes, it's definitely better than, better than Batman v Superman simply because you can see where Marvel took their time developing their movies up to this point versus where Batman v Superman all of a sudden, you know, they're just jumping into stuff. We have a new Batman. He's been Batman for years. And, and Wonder Woman's been around for hundreds of years. And Superman's there. This is completely different. The pacing of it is like, wow. It's like fine wine. They just came with everything and put it together in this movie. And they just made it make sense. And that's where it kind of just destroyed Batman v Superman. Whereas there's parts of that movie where you got to get to know everybody all over. You don't know what's going on. But Superman may be the bad guy. It's, this movie, just trust me. If if you want to see a good action superhero movie, this is the one to go see. This is definitely, definitely a good movie. Was it better than Deadpool? Yes, definitely it was better than Deadpool. Yes, it was better than Batman v Superman. Maybe the best movie of the year. It's, it's looking like it so far. But like I said, my only concern was there were certain characters that weren't in it. That should have been in it. And I'm not going to say who. Because I want y'all to have some stuff where you go into it. You know, you see for yourself. But anyway. My thoughts on the movie is, man. If I had to give it a score, I'd give it an, I'd give it a 8. 8.5, 9 out of 10. Yeah, I have to say 9 out of 10. Because Batman v Superman was a 7 or 8. People really were hard on that movie. But I thought it was a good movie. But this movie's definitely just better. It, it turned up, man. It's, it's completely turned up, the movie. It's funny. It has this good humor in it, good action, everything. You can't go wrong with the movie. So, with that being said, um, let me know what you think in the comment section if you're going to go see this. If you did get to see it like me, let me know what you thought of it as well. I'm out of here. If you want to see the spoiler version of this review, definitely click on that because I'm going to get into details about the stuff that happened in the movie. But like I said, I won't do it here. I'm out of here later. Exactly the same as far as the edges and the way that things reflect. Now, the game should be around 1080p, but this is not confirmed. On my display, it did register as 1080p on both consoles.